It was a quiet night on a beach in Japan just before dawn. Two shadowy figures approached each other as the sun rays began to light up the polished steel of their blades. They approached methodically and in anticipation of an arduous battle. Musashi had challenged many warriors throughout his life, but this duel held particular significance. His challenger, Toda Segen, was renowned for his swift and unpredictable technique. Feelings of doubt and fear began to creep up in Musashi's mind. He knew that with an opponent like this, anything could happen. As they marched closer to each other, Musashi began to listen to the falling of the waves on the sea floor and the whispers of wind in the night. The voices of doubt in his mind became quiet. As he became one with the moment, he felt his hands on the handle of his blade, and all thoughts of defeat slipped away. Musashi had been training relentlessly, and the lessons he had learned throughout his life of ups and downs gave him a quiet confidence in his abilities. To Musashi, each duel was more than just a test of skill. It was a mental battle challenging his very understanding of life in combat. Musashi recalled a recent conversation with an old monk. The monk had told him, every battle you face is a mirror Musashi. It reflects your fears, your strengths, your beliefs, and your weaknesses. To defeat your opponent, you must first understand yourself. Musashi closed his eyes and envisioned the duel. He saw Sagan's swift strikes and anticipated counters. But more than physical moves, he delved into the philosophy behind each move. Musashi believed that true combat was a dance of spirits, not just bodies. The sun was now higher and the time had come. The two warriors bowed respectfully, and their eyes locked in mutual acknowledgement of each other's skill. As the duel commenced, Seigen was quick to attack, his blade moving like a blur. But Musashi, having contemplated his opponent's moves in his mind, was prepared. He evaded, parried, and countered with calculated precision. But beyond the physical moves, there was a deeper battle taking place. With each strike and counter, Musashi aimed to not just defeat Seigen, but to understand him, to get into his mind and to predict his philosophy, to counter it with his own. In the end, after a tense battle, Musashi emerged victorious. But it wasn't just a win over Seigen, it was a deeper triumph over his inner doubts and fears. This was just one of many battles where Musashi would emerge victorious. Throughout his life as a samurai, he managed to remain undefeated in over 60 duels. As you can only imagine, this is an incredible achievement that some may deem as just a mere folklore. The question is, however, how was he able to achieve this in a game that can be wildly unpredictable? The opponents he was facing were often on a similar skill level as Musashi, so what was the differentiating factor that allowed him to always emerge victorious? Musashi's technique was excellent, but it wasn't his external skill that made him the best swordsman to ever live. It was his inner mastery of thoughts and emotions. Musashi understood that a cluttered mind would lead to mistakes in combat. If he doubted himself or overthought the fight, then it would psych him out, leading to unnecessary mistakes. Musashi would empty his mind before a fight, silencing his thoughts and becoming one with the present moment. This is the hallmark of entering the flow state. In a state of flow, everything slows down, and things seem to happen with enhanced precision. The state of flow is unreachable for one who has a cluttered mind, full of doubt and fear. It is only achievable when the mind becomes silent and clear. It's a state that is elusive and difficult to reach because it can't be reached through trying harder or expending more effort. Getting into the state of flow is more of a relaxation into the moment than it is an effort. There's a saying that goes, as soon as you think about the flow state, you cease being in it. Musashi understood this and was able to train his mind to access the state at will. This allowed him to battle with enhanced levels of intuition and gave him the ability to sense the moves his opponent would make before they even made them. He also understood that emotions like anger and fear clouded his judgment and made him less effective in battle. Musashi would cultivate a sense of detachment which allowed him to remain calm and composed even in life-threatening situations. If he started to become overwhelmed with fear, then it would only cause him to tense up, make mistakes, and eventually lead to inevitable defeat. He had a unique ability to let go of things like doubt and fear and dial into the moment. This doesn't mean that he would resist his thoughts and emotions and push them away, but he just wouldn't give any attachment or importance to the thoughts running through his head. He was able to see the thought and not give it any of his attention or energy, refocusing back onto the battle in front of him. In the Book of the Five Rings, Musashi described this state as the void. In this state, one is not attached to any thought or emotion, allowing for pure, unhindered action. Musashi understood that this mental fortitude he was cultivating gave him a huge edge over his opponents, even when faced with unfavorable odds. 
He believed that the mind was extremely powerful and could overcome all perceived limitations. This is why it was so important for him to detach from thoughts of defeat. He knew that if his attention was focused on losing and defeat, then this result was far more likely to happen. This can be easier said than done because the mind can be like a raging river at times, throwing up thoughts of doubt and defeat in an unending barrage. Musashi didn't just magically fall into mental mastery, he adopted a rigorous meditation practice that allowed him to consistently and predictably achieve these states. One of Musashi's core meditation practices was cultivating self-awareness and remaining fully present in the moment. Musashi frequently mentions the importance of maintaining a clear, observant, and present mind during combat. This is known today as mindfulness or self-observation. It's when we step back from our thoughts and emotions and observe them non-judgmentally. This gives us a buffer zone between the emotions we have and the thoughts we think, which gives us more peace and self-control. It's also a core foundation of Stoic philosophy. He also talked about the state of no mind, where all thoughts were emptied and he would rest in the void. This void is the silence that remains when thoughts quiet down. It is a state of stability, calm, and peace and can be seen as an inner retreat from a noisy world. Musashi also aimed to use this understanding to get into the mind of his opponents, using psychological warfare to win duels. He aimed to understand what they were thinking and their state of mind so he could use it to his advantage. He wanted to know what they feared, desired, and anticipated so he could manipulate the battle in his favor. Using this information, he would attempt to throw the opponent off balance mentally or confuse them with unexpected tactics. One of his tactics was to purposely be late for battle. This wasn't merely a sign of disrespect, but a calculated move to disturb his opponent's mental equilibrium. He knew that this would cause the opponent to have emotions of anger and irritation, leading them to make mistakes that Musashi could exploit. For Musashi, every duel was deeper than just defeating his opponents. It was a step closer to his quest for self-mastery. He understood that true victory wasn't on the battlefield, but was in constantly challenging, understanding, and bettering himself. He saw every duel as a lesson to improve, and never got complacent thinking that he was the best and had nothing to learn. After every fight, he would reflect on any mistakes he made to work on improving his technique. After winning 30 duels in a row, he could have easily came to the conclusion that there is nothing else he could learn, but he still continued to push forward, honing his skill and inner fortitude. He understood that if you get overconfident and feel that you have nothing else to learn, then it is the quickest path to stagnancy. By keeping an open mind to the fact that there is always something else to learn, he was able to constantly improve with each battle. This takes a certain level of discipline that is rare in the modern world. It seems like a lot of people want to take the easy way out, or get by by doing the absolute bare minimum. This quest for mastery requires a constant diligence to improve oneself, and the humility to admit that there are always ways that one can improve. If you'd like to check out my ebook that goes much deeper into mastering your thoughts and emotions, then check out the link in the description.